The Oilers are in the city of brotherly love. Can they extend their point streak to 10? We will talk about that and much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On Oilers Podcast. I'm your host and former Oilers game day producer Brett Holden. As mentioned on today's episode, the Edmonton Oilers are in Philadelphia as they look to go 9-0-1 in their last 10 games and get their 30th win on the season in Philadelphia. We will preview the game in just a second. But also on today's episode, we're going to talk about the three keys to victory for the Oilers in Philadelphia as they're going up against a pretty tough team in Philly. I mean, let's be real, that's always the story with the Flyers. And to wrap up, we are going to go through the Edmonton Oilers prospect report and take a look at the prospects south of the border in the States as a couple of prospects are making the rounds in the headlines recently, especially within the prospect circle. We will talk about all that and much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Thank you for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you find your podcast. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook partner of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. And where we get started is with the Oilers and the Flyers at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. As the Oilers and the Flyers face off for the first time this season, and this one has the potential to be a little bit of a banger, a big mean team in the Philadelphia Flyers, coached by John Tortorella, who cuts no flack. And the Edmonton Oilers are coming in quite hot. A little bit of Not really bulletin board material for the Philadelphia Flyers, but an easy one to wake up for if you're the Edmonton Oilers and if you're the Philadelphia Flyers. A very, very fun game we have ahead of us at 5 o'clock here in Edmonton. But let's take a look at the lines for each team as the Edmonton Oilers had a little bit of a skate today. We know who will be the starter But we will know more about the lines closer to puck drop probably around when uh, warm-ups start. But based on the lines from last game, here are the lines for the Edmonton Oilers heading into tonight's game against the Flyers. Dylan Holloway is on the top line with Connor McDavid and Derek Ryan, who has been having a pretty decent spell up between the top six with uh, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and as well in the middle six on that kind of third-ish or third-and-a-half line as well. So he's been getting a lot of time with Connor and Leon. On the second line, Evander Kane, Leon Dreisaitl, and Zach Hyman. The third line, one of the most exciting lines for the Edmonton Oilers for a lot of recent games as well. Clean Costin with Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Matthias Janmark. And Ryan McLeod will be uh, on the third-and-a-half line, four-and-a-half line. Uh, with uh, Warren Fogle, who scored two goals last game against the Detroit Red Wings. It seems like, yes, a pulley RV will be a healthy scratch once again. The Edmonton Oilers defense stays the same as Darnell Nurse will be with Cody Ceci, Brett Kulak with Tyson Berry. Kulak almost dropping the gloves at the end of the game against the Red Wings. Philip Broberg and uh, Evan Bouchard will make up the third pairing, and Vincent DeHarnay, the seventh defense. Starting in net for the Edmonton Oilers tonight, Stuart Skinner, as it seems like it's going to be an Edmontonian versus an Edmontonian in net tonight as Carter Hart will get the start for the Philadelphia Flyers. We'll talk about uh, the Flyers in a second here, but I want to talk about uh, a little bit on the back end for the Edmonton Oilers heading into this game tonight. A lot of talk around Darnell Nurse and Cody Ceci staying together. Now, I think these lines have been working out, or these pairings have been working out for the Edmonton Oilers much better than people 
talk about. But the other thing is, is that these pairings are just more for the lineup card. It is very fluid with how the Edmonton Oilers deploy their defensemen. In fact, Darnell Nurse and Vincent DeArnay at times have been the Edmonton Oilers' best pairings alongside Broberg and Bouchard, but DeArnay has also had a lot of time alongside Broberg. Uh, Barry and uh, Kulak has been very uh, good together, but they have also had different combinations as well. This is why you run the 11-7. You aren't married to to those uh, pairings and to those lines as well. I also want to talk about Brett Kulak as it's been a lot of time between uh, games for the Edmonton Oilers. I just wanted to, to note something here. As Brett Kulak did drop the gloves or it looked like they were about to tilly at the end of the Detroit Red Wings game, but you may remember the last game before the All-Star break, Brett Kulak also dropped the gloves with Sam Lafferty. So in the last two consecutive Edmonton Oilers games, Brett Kulak dropping gloves, getting a little nasty. So that's nice to see for the Edmonton Oilers. Some unusual suspects getting into the fisticuffs. Also some unusual suspects getting on the score sheet. Let's take a look on the other side as the Philadelphia Flyers are coming into this one with a pretty interesting uh, record or pretty interesting uh, last couple of games. 21-22-9 on the year. They're kind of in an injury bug. Carter Hart has seen some time out of the lineup. Uh, Zach McEwen has been out of the lineup as well. So the lines look like this for the Flyers heading into tonight's game. Also subject to change as well. But Kevin Hayes, who at times have been, uh, who has been, excuse me, the Flyers' top scorer, he's going to be on the top line with Scott Lawton and Owen Tippett, who's having a very, very good year so far. Really nice to see, uh, especially a, a tough start to his career, but. But good little uh, uh, coming out party almost for Owen Tippett this year. James Van Riemsdyk on the second line with Noah Cates and Travis Konechny, one of my favorite players in the league. Speaking one of, my, of one of my favorite players, Joel Farabee is on a pretty fun line on the third line for the Flyers. Farabee's with Morgan Frost and Wade Allison for the Flyers. That will be a fun one to watch tonight. And Nick Delorier's on the fourth line with Patrick Brown and former New York Islander draft pick Kiefer Bellows. The back end for the Flyers goes like this. Ivan Provorov alongside Cam York, who is a very interesting defensive prospect, has some offensive upside, a pretty interesting skater as well. He will be a fun watch as well. Travis Sanheim is on the second pairing alongside Rasmus Ristolainen. And Nick Sealer, who is apparently getting some trade interest as well, is on the third pairing alongside Tony D'Angelo. And as mentioned, Carter Hart Kata Hat will get the uh, start for the Flyers. He's 15, 15, and 8 on the year. Uh, 2.86 goals against average and a .911. Save percentage. Now, as mentioned, the Flyers have pretty interesting splits and uh, pretty interesting last couple of games as well. Their power play is not fantastic. It is 30th in the league where the Edmonton Oilers obviously sit first. They have a 15 point. 0.8% power play. That is not great. However, they do have a better penalty kill than the Edmonton Oilers. They sit 18th in the league with a 77.1%. But you may remember from yesterday, we also talked about how good the Edmonton Oilers uh, penalty kill has been in the last nine games. We'll see if the Edmonton Oilers can extend that point streak tonight against the Flyers. What do the Oilers have to do against the Flyers to extend that point streak? We will talk about that in just a second, but first, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We are really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they are the number one sports book in America. FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that is even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. 
FanDuel lets you bet on anything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. Speaking of touchdowns, I was taking a look at the uh, Super Bowl, seeing some of the other props. And I was looking at the touchdown. We talked about the touchdown prop already. But how about scoring two plus touchdowns? Not just one, but another one and maybe even another one. And I think this Super Bowl might be the coming out party for Isaiah Pacheco. And Isaiah Pacheco's line for two plus touchdowns right now is plus 850. I think he can break out on a little bit of a run. We saw it in the NFC or in the AFC Championship. Uh, I think he can get a little nasty, little quick, and find a little open space. I don't know, but I'm here talking hockey either way. Either way, the FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly so join fanduel today at fanduel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on super bowl 57 that is fanduel.com slash locked on make every moment more with fanduel the official sportsbook partner of the nfl Alrighty, moving on to the three keys of success for the Edmonton Oilers or the three keys to success for the Edmonton Oilers against the Philadelphia Flyers is again, this Flyers team is not one who is going to just let the Edmonton Oilers take them to town. This is going to be a difficult team, obviously, as they are coached by John Tortorella and the Edmonton Oilers have been on a little bit of a run. We all know how teams like to play when Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl come to town, so there are a lot of things to expect in this game. But let's go to the three keys. The first thing is, as it always is, is score first. The Edmonton Oilers are 18-6-2 when scoring first in uh, in a game this season. The Edmonton Oilers, now this isn't, I need to make sure that I focus on this isn't the biggest and most important thing. The Edmonton Oilers in their last eight, nine games, they haven't allowed or they haven't scored the first goal, excuse me, in every single one of those games. The Edmonton Oilers have a very good knack and ability to come back in games and win them. We have seen that from last year, even in, and more specifically in the playoffs. The Edmonton Oilers are able to come back into games, but if the Edmonton Oilers are able to score first, especially against a lowly team like the Philadelphia Flyers, take the air out of the arena pretty early and just, uh, well, the Edmonton Oilers are doing exactly what everybody expected them to it becomes a pretty low, not level game, but low expectancy game. The Edmonton Oilers are able to take the pressure out of them and just keep moving on, which kind of runs into the next uh, key. Key number two for the Edmonton Oilers to winning this game against the Philadelphia Flyers is play your game. Playing your game will then lead to scoring that first goal, but also will lead to scoring the next goal, the next goal, the next goal, but also preventing the other team from scoring. The Edmonton Oilers, we talked about in yesterday's episode, just how good the Oilers have been at 5-on-5. Five five. And if the Edmonton Oilers are able to keep that role going at 5-on-5, five five, the Edmonton Oilers aren't going to have an issue. But it's a matter of playing that game. You can say in theory all we want, oh, if the Edmonton Oilers play their game, they're going to win the game. Then it gets to puck drop and they don't play their game and everyone goes, oh! <gasps> Who could have saw that coming? Well, they didn't play their game. Everybody who said to play their game would have seen that coming. The other thing with that is punish the Philadelphia Flyers on special teams. Yes, the Flyers have a better, I shouldn't put in quotations, they do have a statistically better penalty kill than the Edmonton Oilers right now. However, in the last nine games, the Edmonton Oilers have had the best penalty kill and have looked fantastic in the league so far. The Edmonton Oilers are able to take advantage of that penalty kill, the Oilers could make this game pretty ugly. On the flip side as well, the Flyers' power play isn't fantastic either. 15% on the season, not great. The Edmonton Oilers, who again have been fantastic uh, killing penalties recently, 
they shouldn't have an issue, but if they do, it will be an issue for the Oilers, but that is a thing to focus on for the Oilers as well. Keep piling on, keep scoring, as mentioned, and don't get silly. The Flyers are, I don't want to say a dirty team, because I, you know a dirty team, and norm, normally those dirty teams are just, it's just straight up nasty. They have no business trying to win hockey games, they're just out there to be nasty. That is not what the Philadelphia Flyers do. They have a lot of very skilled guys like Morgan Frost, James Van Riemsdyk, uh, uh, Kevin Hayes, but you can go out there as well and take a look at their skill set. They also have a grit to them as well in Kevin Hayes, in Morgan Frost, in Joel Farabee, in Travis Konechny. I didn't even mention Konechny in the last one as well. Travis Konechny as well. They have a little bit of a nastiness to them as well. Fun players to watch play, but a pain to play against. Don't get silly and don't get pulled into their game. That is the big thing. And that also runs into the third key, which is get nasty. Get nasty with the Flyers. They want to get nasty with you, so you can kind of play into that game a little. We saw the Edmonton Oilers are able to play that game and still keep their heads a la the game against the the, uh, Detroit Red Wings. But if you start getting too much into the Flyers game, getting your head off your shoulders, letting them get under your skin. That is that kind of fine line between playing nasty and not getting silly. So that is where the Edmonton Oilers need to kind of watch that tone. That is why it's kind of, that is why it's one of the keys is because you can get nasty, but you can also get silly. Uh, Again, we mentioned that we saw it with the Oilers and the Flyers last game. Guys like Clean Costin and Vincent DeHarnay, that guy can man out. Did you, it was a very subtle thing, but DeHarnay had one guy in the right hand and kind of skated over to the scrum that was going on and horse collared another guy and had two guys from the Red Wings in both hands. He is a monster human being. I mean, we 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 know that, but. It, it is going to be a fun game to watch with Vincent DeHarnay. We've seen with Kane, he's not scared to scrap it up a little bit as well. He didn't drop the gloves, but did get nasty as well. And Darnell Nurse, I think with the ability to have Vincent DeHarnay in the lineup, it has allowed Darnell Nurse to... We, we know the argument of Darnell Nurse fighting, going, you can't have Darnell Nurse off the ice for five minutes, blah, blah, blah. You can't risk him getting uh, or not having him on the ice, everything like that. But I think uh, Vincent DeHarnay kind of gives the Edmonton Oilers and Darnell Nurse that security blanket where if he does want to get a little nasty, take some time in the box, you know what I'm saying here, uh, uh, just really step up for the team. I think that that has allowed uh, the Edmonton Oilers to, and Darnell Nurse specifically, to get better in that uh, situation. But, as mentioned, the three keys for the game between the Edmonton Oilers and the Philadelphia Flyers for the Oilers to come away with their ninth win in their last ten games and their tenth straight game with a point. The first one being score first. The Oilers are 18-6-2 when scoring first. It'd be pretty nice to make it 19-6-2 so far this year. The Second one is play your game. The Oilers have been better at 5-on-5 on the penalty kill, and obviously everybody knows their power play is the best in the league. Play your game, and it is not going to be an easy one for the Flyers. And the third key is get nasty. You're playing the Broad Street Bullies. We all know the Philadelphia Flyers' uh, reputation so kind of play into it a little bit. You're going into to the arena of the Broad Street Bullies. Go show them why the Edmonton Oilers are the real deal. Alrighty, let's wrap up today's episode with a little bit of the Edmonton Oilers prospect report. As a couple of Edmonton Oilers prospects are getting some love from prospect uh, reporters, prospect lovers, prospect analysts. Either way, we will talk about that in just a second. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you gotta try Built Bar. Look, we're just coming out of the holidays. I know we're getting through February, and I mean, that's the perfect time to commit to your New Year's resolution. Mine is eating better. 
and you can probably hear me tapping away at my belly. I need to eat better, and I don't want to sacrifice taste along with that. But I don't have to with Built Bar. Built is healthy and tasty at the same time. I don't understand it. Seriously, it is so good. You won't think that it's good for you, but it is. So what makes Built so good? Well, for starters, they have 100% real chocolate on their bars. Yes, real chocolate. Plus, they have so many undeniably delicious flavors, including churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. They have, oh, oh, that churro. I, I've said this before, but anything churro flavored, forget about it. It is the greatest thing in the world, and Built Bar does it so well. I'm not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste just like candy bars, all while maintaining amazing macros. And it's even better for you because they are healthy. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein, all with a Built Bar. If you want to check it out, just head to Built.com now. Alrighty, moving on to the Edmonton Oilers prospect report as we wrap up today's episode. And we're heading down south for the, all the prospects playing in the United States of America, baby. Four Oilers prospects currently playing in NCAA, which we will talk about in a second. But one Edmonton Oilers prospect currently playing junior hockey in the States, in the USHL, has maybe not necessarily been making waves, but has caught the attention of some prospects prospect heads in the uh, the prospect uh, whatever you know there just a lot of prospect analysts have been talking about this guy and for good reason obviously I'm talking about Shane Lachance who's heading to Boston University next year but is playing for the Youngstown Phantoms now I believe it's Stephen Ellis who wrote on Daily Faceoff about Shane Lachance and this is very interesting this is the first couple of sentences about it there might not be a crazier stat line among all draft prospects than Shane Lachance's numbers with the USHL's Youngstown Phantoms. He's up to 23 goals in 30 points in 33 games and sits second in goals behind Chicago Steel forward Jack Harvey. Now, since that article, Shane Lachance now has 37 games under his uh, belt, 24 goals, 10 assists, 34 points. And in the last five games, he has been fantastic. Three goals, four assists, seven points, still tied for second in USHL goals. As mentioned, is going to Boston University next year. But that is where my concern comes from. The Edmonton Oilers have not had a lot of success with uh, college free agents. Uh, Drake Kajula being one of the only ones that really come to mind that had some success with the Oilers. Obviously, Justin Schultz is the, the key one for the Oilers. But other than that, as of recently, the Edmonton Oilers don't have a lot of success with their college players. John Marino ended up getting traded. If I'm not mistaken as well, Riley Nash was also a draft or a, a, a college player who ended up getting traded from the Oilers. So the Edmonton Oilers, we talked recently on Locked On NHL on the Western Conference Tuesdays that I do as well. If you haven't checked that out, please do. But, um... We talked about American prospects with Canadian teams, especially with teams like the Edmonton Oilers. Well, we didn't talk about the Edmonton Oilers. We talked about the Calgary Flames, but especially the Oilers and Flames, and we're seeing it as well potentially with Vancouver too. So I'm concerned that Shane Lachance, when his time is up in the uh, NCAA, he won't sign with the Oilers. We shall see. Obviously, this may be a blip in the system, but the for, former sixth-round pick by the Oilers in 2021. I don't want to put a dampen on all this, but there is obviously that caveat 
being a Canadian market, maybe Shane Lachance doesn't view the Edmonton Oilers the same as a Canadian may as well. But either way, that doesn't take away from the season he is having a fantastic season. Hopefully, the Edmonton Oilers are, are taking a look at this kid because he is, well, obviously they are, but this is very impressive numbers. His next game is tomorrow against the Green Bay Gamblers for the uh, Youngstown Phantoms in the USHL. I believe they're still on Hockey TV too, but either way, let's roll through the next couple of prospects here. As the Edmonton Oilers' next four prospects are currently in the NCAA, starting off with Rod the Bod's son, Skylar Brindamore, who the Edmonton Oilers selected back in 2017 in the sixth round. Most of these guys actually, uh, three Edmonton Oilers picks, uh, or uh, three Edmonton Oilers dra draft prospects who are down in the U.S. right now are sixth round picks. One is a seventh, and one is a third, so that's pretty interesting. But back to Skylar Brindamore. He is having a very good year for the Quinnipiac uh, Wildcats, I believe they are called. Alrighty, just wanted to double check. It was the Bobcats, the Quinnipiac Bobcats, not Wildcats. But let's continue on with Skylar Brindamore as Quinnipiac Bobcats are the second best team in the country. They are rolling. They are currently 23-3-3 uh, and on the season, and a lot has to do with Skylar Brindamore's season. 28 games played for the Bobcats, 12 goals, 12 assists, 24 points. In the last five games, he has continued continued that role. Two goals, two assists, four points in those five games, and has really had a very good season. Career highs and goals and points. I believe this is his final year of eligibility, so we will see if he makes the jump to the AHL next year. We shall see if the Edmonton Oilers keep him as well, but has been having a very good season with Quinnipiac. His next game is also tomorrow against Clarkson. You can find that on ESPN Plus if you do have access to ESPN Plus. But let's move on to one of the players for the Oilers prospects who is playing at a uh, kind of a different program. He's currently playing at St. Lawrence after transferring there from Providence, which is a very big uh, hockey program down in the States. But that's Thomas Missouri, Czech Republic uh, draft pick the Edmonton Oilers, or Czechian uh, draft pick the Edmonton Oilers picked back in 2019. Now, he's a big boy. He's six foot four, 205 pounds, and has found a little bit of a home as well. He's recently also caught some eyes, but uh, 24 games played for Missouri, three goals, eight assists, good for 11 points. Now, as mentioned, he did make that uh, jump from Providence to St. Lawrence. He only played eight games with Providence, and now since then, jumping up to 24 games, really has played well for them. Uh, he is uh, he got two assists against Brown recently, uh, resulting in two of his three assists in his last five games. Now, St. Lawrence isn't having a fantastic year, 14, 14, and 0, but we shall see uh, just how much development really comes from uh, Thomas Missouri's season. His next game comes tomorrow against Princeton, but their uh, St. Lawrence Saints, or his St. Lawrence Saints, does face off against Skylar Brindamore's Quinnipiac on Saturday. That will be also on ESPN+. Plus. A little bit of a Oilers prospect versus Oilers prospect there. That might be a fun one. And we are going to wrap up with two prospects prospects who currently play on the same team with the University of Vermont with Todd Woodcroft, Jay Woodcroft's brother, and that is Joel Mata and Luca Munzenberger. Mata being the seventh round pick from last year's draft, he was selected 222nd overall in the 2022 draft. I think it's just fit fitting if he wears number 22 with the Oilers. But either way, uh, Joel Mata is uh, honestly a little bit of an exciting prospect for me. Now, he's not a flashy guy. He won't be a flashy guy for the Oilers because he takes 
pride in being a bottom six type player. He takes pride in shutting down the offense of the other team. This year, he, in 27 games, five goals, five assists, uh, 10 points. He has three assists in the last five games. In fact, had a three-game point streak going uh, for a little bit as well, all being those assists. Now, uh, they aren't having a very good year in Vermont, 9-15-3. But uh, a big development year for those guys. Now, um, Joel Mata did get a, or he did score a shootout winner against uh, Boston College recently as well. So, again, not necessarily a player who does get goals or points all the time, but is an effective player. Big two-way guy. I'm really excited to see where he goes. Seventh round picks are exciting for me just to see what ends up happening. We see what ends up happening in the likes of Vincent DeHarnay. And speaking of big defensemen, big six foot three defenseman, Luca Munzenberger was selected by the Edmonton Oilers in 2021 in the third round. 90th overall, and a lot of people were questioning the pick. Didn't know who he was, but a lot of draft heads have been giving him a lot of props recently. 22 uh, games played for Munzenberger, 5 assists so far this year, which surpasses his 3 from last, but it's not about the offensive totals for Luka Munzenberger. He is a defensive leader on the ice. He has developed into a just a mobile defensively sound defenseman and his hockey, hockey IQ has also developed as well. Over on uh, the Hockey Writers um, they wrote a very good article on Luka Munzenberger recently on February 8th. It, it just has been really, really, really exciting to see his development. They wrote the unexpected selection had many fans puzzled but excited to see where the hype was coming from. Munzenberger in his second season with the University of Vermont in the NCAA, where he has played 22 games, scoring no goals but 5 assists. His rights remain with the Oilers but is still unsigned right now. The 5 points he has this season are an increase from the 3 he had in his freshman year. He has built a reputation as a stay-at-home defender with solid skating ability, which is exactly what the Oilers will be looking for as they build their future on defense. That is why he is very exciting because he will have a future with the Oilers. They say he is a responsible Pass first blue liner who has a solid shot but doesn't use it very often. I think the Edmonton Oilers can kind of untap that with him. But uh, their next game comes against UMass Lowell tomorrow, or UMass, not Lowell, UMass tomorrow uh, on ESPN Plus as well. Again, Luka Munzenberger, really excited. One of my favorite prospects in the Oilers organization. Let's wrap up there. We've been rambling a little too much. The Edmonton Oilers are at the Wells Fargo Center tonight. 5 o'clock puck drop mountain time in Philadelphia. We shall see if the Edmonton and Oilers can improve to 9-0-1 in their last 10 games. And if they can win their 30th game on the year, we shall hopefully at the end of this one celebrate the 30th and play La Bamba, baby.